Hello everyone. Welcome to 2024. Happy New Year to everyone. You may think that this is the first video for 2024, but actually it's the last one for 2023. I am uh, uploading this uh, on New Year's Day 2024, but all this video was shot uh, last year, especially uh, last week, and uh, also a little bit throughout the year. And basically what I want to do today is, uh, for the last video for 2023, is to kind of show you an overview of everything that was done over the past year. So we're going to take a look at uh, where things stood one year ago, January 1st of 2023, uh, and uh, see how it looked a year ago and then compare that to how things look today. And then I wanted to mention a website called the Model Train Enthusiast. It's basically modeltrainenthusiast.com. And uh, please check them out if you can. It's a pretty cool site. They have a lot of videos. And they basically are like a clearinghouse of different Model Train videos. Now I was noticing a couple of my videos were getting a lot of, uh, a tremendous amount of outside source of views on uh, different videos and it got to the point where it's like over half of the views came from sources outside of YouTube and I was trying to figure out well who is you know helping me out and linking to my videos and so I did some searching and so forth and I found this model train enthusiast and they have been posting some of my videos so model train enthusiast thank you very much I appreciate you putting my videos up and would appreciate if you keep doing it. Uh, really like you to do that and I want to return the favor and hopefully get some people towards your site. Again, it's Model Train Enthusiasts. They have videos of all kinds of different model trains. A lot of it's scale model trains, which we're, most of us are interested in, but they have some other stuff too. Um, so please check out Model Train Enthusiasts if you get a chance. Take a Step back with me to uh, the beginning of 2023, and one uh, big change you can see is the fascia color, and also uh, the backdrop was in a little bit of, shat, of sad shape. But uh, this was at the beginning of the year of 2023, and as you notice, I did get some scenery done in 2022. Uh, Mark Bridgewater came up and helped me uh, with this scenery. So this has actually been in place for over a year. Also by this point, on uh, the beginning of last year, I did have a complete loop done all the way around. So we did have the golden spike in uh, 2022. But you can see the backdrop here is in pretty bad shape. The fascia color is a little different. And then you see a big difference here where we did not have any scenery beyond this point. So this is where Kerval is today. You kind of see um, it did not, at the beginning of last year, did not have any scenery done here. So uh, quite a bit of scenery was done between this point, the beginning of Kerval, all the way around through Evanston. This uh, view also kind of, for those of you who have not been following all the way through, kind of see how the construction was for um, uh, getting the layout to the point where it is today. It is L-Gritter construction. And then I have supports at uh, every 12 inches. Now some of those on the curve are closer than 12 inches, but... It was basically a 12-inch uh, minimum, or I should say maximum, 12-inch maximum between supports, and there was 3-8-inch uh, uh, plywood used for the sub-roadbed. So this is uh, the Wasatch grade coming up to the Wasatch uh, summit.
One thing that has not changed a whole lot is the uh, rolling stock. I had these uh, SD70Ms, bought them even before I started on the layout, before we even moved into the house. And as you can see, the first pass in the construction of the layout was to do the uh, finishing out of the basement and building the bench work, putting down the road bed and track, wiring all the track, and then even installing the signaling. So at this point we're blowing the horn for imaginary road crossings. Now I was thinking about having a road crossing there. I kind of went against that. It just didn't fit with the uh, topography of the layout right there. I wasn't sure how I could get a road coming in this direction at that particular location. So here are the UTLX. Uh, not only was there no scenery, there was no track even put down. That UTLX and the upper grade, the upper level, also had the bench work in the track and uh, down, but no scenery at all. Though I notice I did have some photo backdrops up. I was kind of surprised that I had the uh, photo backdrop up that long ago. I have the uh, Microsoft OneDrive for my uh, online storage, my cloud storage for all my uh, files and data and so forth. And if you have OneDrive, you know that they do this uh, on this day uh, thing where you, every morning they have a, a link come up and you can see pictures that you took uh, one year ago today. And I'm sure Google Drive and Apple Dropbox, whatever the different uh, cloud services you use probably have the same type of thing. But it's always interesting when I that pops up every morning I can kind of look back and see what I did one year ago. It not only has pictures but also videos that were taken. Uh, so I can take a look back and see you know what types of things I was doing a year ago and then it goes you know two years ago three years ago just wherever I have pictures it'll show you know back I have some that are like 22 years old and so on I uh, hear you know so I did have the track at Evanston uh, laid down but uh, this uh, orientation of the engine facilities track is different so one of the things I did during 2023 was to change the engine facilities and kind of ex, uh, expanded the bench work right there so that it would be more of a inline route from the drill track to the engine house and not on a curve, which I had originally planned to do. Now all this is uh, ballasted and everything. Uh, for most of the time, I did have uh, this little window here between the Evanston Yard and the Helix so that I could kind of watch the trains go up. That window is no longer there, which we'll see in a little bit. All right, so at this point, kind of to, to sum up a little bit, I did have a complete loop all the way around lower level and upper level through the helix, through the staging yard, so I could run trains continuously. I did have that done at the start of the year. Um, 
here you can see some more of the main line. I did not have anything done here at West Vaco. And uh, I'm, it's kind of interesting to see that window there. I, well, it took me a long time to get myself to the point where I got that covered up. Um, but here you can see the uh, what it looked like for the Evanston Yard. This is something that, I, not the Evanston Yard, the West Vaco Yard. So this is also something that I that I worked on. Please take some time to like this video. I would really appreciate that. It definitely helps uh, the dis distribution of the video if it has a lot of likes. So if you could, please just take uh, some time to like the video. All right, then here is, you can see where things stand today. So this is something that I did during 2023. I did get all the track put down at West Vaco. This actually has turned out to be a pretty cool operating location. If somebody signs up for the West Vaco yard, they basically have to get uh, loads ready on the two track little uh, arrival departure tracks there for pickup by two trains. There's a train that comes in each direction, a locals, two, two locals. Here you can kind of see where the drill track continues on about halfway around the curve here. It's plenty long for pulling any cars out of the arrival and departure tracks or the little yard tracks here. So there's uh, three yard tracks. There, here you can see the uh, there is access to the yard from both sides. I am going to change the orientation of the uh, track that's under the loader when I move the building closer. And then um, one thing that you already saw was uh, the uh, Evanston Yard excuse me, the UTLX repair facility. This is what it looked like at the beginning of the year. You see I have some uh, track turnout templates down to try and figure out how I was going to lay out all the turnouts to get uh, the yard and everything for that. The uh, paper templates are very useful when trying to figure out how to lay out everything. Right, here's what the UTLX yard looks like today. So I've got scenery put down, all the uh, roadbed on and track and turnouts and ballast. And so it's a good start uh, for the operations here. This is also a really cool uh, operating location. When people come to op sessions, um, here you can see the three track yard. When people come to the uh, op sessions, they can sign up for the West Vaco yard, which has its own switcher, and they basically get cars ready for trains that are going to be picking up loads and then dropping off empties. There's also pulling the cars through the flood loader and uh, and so on. And then there's also someone can sign up for the UTLX yard which again it, which again gets cars ready to be picked up uh, there's a train that comes out of the Evanston yard they usually pick up and drop off about three to five cars and then the UTLX switcher has to spot the cars at specific work locations so there's three locations inside the building two locations outside the building and there's a sheet that shows where all the cars are supposed to be located according to the repairs that need to be done on the layout. All right, so uh, during this last year, I did work on the West Vaco yard, um, got that track all done, put the track and scenery down at the UTLX yard, and then a lot of work on scenery from Castle Rock here, which you're looking at all the way through the Evanston Yard. So we're going to go ahead and take another journey through this same route, but then see if we can uh, pick up some of the things that uh, were accomplished through the year. Again, this scenery here was 
completed in February of 2022. So it's over, almost two years old. Now I did do the, the backdrop. I added the photo backdrops, which were cutouts. Those are photos I took while I was out in Utah and Wyoming. And then I also kind of repainted the sky uh, because there was a lot of a lot of damage from transporting the backdrop. That backdrop is uh, made of a is styrene. It's basically a 50 foot by two foot roll of styrene that was used as a flashing for underneath decks, uh, underneath uh, decks, you know, like your backyard deck. And they would put flashing underneath the deck so that people could use the underside to sit under and without getting wet during the rain. And it's not easy to find, uh, but I've been using those for a long time. I first used them on the uh, Geneva sub back in uh, 2008. I started that. Actually, I used it on some of it. Some of us from the layout before that, the Rochelle sub I had for a while. And then I moved it to the Geneva sub, which moved to the G Geneva sub in Atlanta. Here you can see some more scenery done. This is scenery that was added in February of 23. Anyway, the backdrop has been on, basically this is it, its fourth layout. So I did, definitely had some damage, so I had to fix that up. Now this uh, scenery here, I also had Mark Bridgewater come up along with Scott Chaffield. And they, two of those gentlemen came up and helped me with this scenery. Um, now I did all the painting and everything and uh, did a lot of it myself, but they definitely helped with the overall uh, formation of the, of the scenery. So they worked with the putting in the cardboard webbing and we put rosin paper over the cardboard webbing. Uh, so the basic shape of the, the scenery through here from Kerrville through the Wasatch grade here was done with the uh, great experience and expertise of, of Mark and Scott. So definitely appreciate them with helping me with, with that. That was done last February again, and then, of course, then also did some more work on the photo backdrops as well as putting on the plaster gauze and uh, ground foam and scenic coverings and so on. And as you can see also, you may have noticed that I do have the fascia now in black instead of being in the Sonoran Desert color. I always liked the Sonoran de Desert color until I saw the black. The Sonoran Desert color look, looked fine, but the black definitely looks sharp. It definitely looks pretty good. Now you, you can see all the scenery that is done on both levels. So as we go through here, we're gonna actually see trains go together on both levels, which is pretty cool. But not only during the year did I get the scenery done on the lower level, but also on the upper level. And in fact, I did the upper level first. And then once I got that done, then I worked on the lower level, which I'm going to do for the entire layout. It only makes sense to do the upper level first so that you don't damage the lower level while you're working on the upper level. So here you can see it coming through the Evanston Yard area. The scenery on both levels actually turned out pretty good. And I've really kind of gotten used to having the two levels. I think it looks, looks pretty good. The only time it looks a little odd to me is like when they're both going in the same direction like this. This kind of looks uh, looks unusual to me. When they're going in the opposite directions on the lower and upper level, it seems to be okay. But when they're going in the same direction, it uh, looks 
it looks cool, you know, to see both trains. And but as far as looking prototypical, it kind of makes it more obvious that there's two levels. When they're going in opposite directions, it doesn't seem to have that effect as much. So all of that was done this last year. And as you can see, there's no more window into the helix. There is a mirror up above that you can use to look inside the helix as you're going through this area. So I'm pretty happy with all that was done. Lots of scenery work from Castle Rock through the Evanston Yard. And then also the upper level from uh, West Vaco through Peru heading into the Helix. And then in addition to that, there was uh, work done on West Vaco as far as just putting on track. And the one thing that I didn't have a video of is uh, I did add the Pocatella sub trackage in so that we could have that operational. This all looks pretty cool. Alright, now what am I going to be doing in 2024, you ask? Well, let's take a look. So this is the unfinished area, and I'm going to basically be working around the layout. There's uh, the Morgan area and the Aspen tunnels in that corner. And this corner is uh, the Taggart tunnels, and then you have the Pocatello sub area above it. Devil slide area is going to be Interstate 80 through there. And all through this area, I'm going to be working in the same fashion as I did around the Evanston area. This is Devil slide and on the lower level, Granger on the upper level. But I'm basically just going to be doing the upper level first and then the lower level. And I'm going to take it section by section. I'll probably do the uh, Emory and West Vaco area, and then go back and do the Morgan and Aspen tunnels area and just kind of work my way around the layout. So it should be pretty cool. Definitely looking forward to getting that done this year. I think I may be able to get it all done, but I can't be totally sure about that. But all things willing, I uh, should be able to get that all taken care of. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Have a great 2024. Uh, be posting some more videos this weekend. Hopefully, we'll get something done. Take care, everybody.